Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm Carl Ross with the University of Portsmouth in the United Kingdom. Today is the 18th of February 2012 and I'm going to give a lecture on um, the use of the commercial finite element computer package answers to analyse the buckling of a submarine type pressure hull. So first we pick on preferences, and then we pick on structural, and then we press OK. And then we pick on the preprocessor, we pick on the element type, and we press add, edit, delete, and we press add, and we put in the shell element here, which is shell 8 node 93, there's 93 and 99 available in ANSYS 11, not available in ANSYS 13, so I will tell you, you've got to use the shell 281 for ANSYS 13, and I will tell you more about that shortly, so we put that in there. We then put the real constants, this is the thickness, we press add and delete, and we press add, OK, and it's 5 centimetres, so I put, I've got to use newtons, metres and kilograms, be very careful with vibration problems with your units, I put 5 E minus 2, which is 5 centimetres, but I put that in metres, 5 E minus, 5 times E to the minus, 5 times 10 to the minus 2 metres, put that in there, then I pick on material properties, I pick on material models, and I pick on structural, I double click that twice, I double click linear twice, I double click elastic twice, I double click isotropic twice, and I put in the Young's modulus, which in newtons, meters, is 2 times 10 to 11, so I put in 2e11 newton per meter squared, and I put in Poisson's ratio, which is 0.3, and I okay that. There, that's fine, and I close this window by pressing material exit. So I've got that, I've got to model it now, so I press on modeling, I pick on create, and I pick on volumes, I pick on cylinder, I pick on solid cylinder, and I'm going to put the origin there, you see the x direction is here and the y direction is there, so the x coordinate is naught, and the y coordinate is naught, and the radius is 5 meters, but it's a 10 meter diameter submarine, and the length of the submarine it's 4 meters, which is referred to as depth here. So we're doing that there, we're drawing the cylinder like that. We press apply, OK, it. we've got our cylinder there. Don't like that view too much, so we can plot control. I'll put pan, zoom, rotate. I'll do an ISO view of it, and I've got an ISO view of it now. I've now got to mesh it, so I go down here, looking for the meshing command. There it is there, so I press that there, and then pick mesh tool there, and I get the mesh tool menu here. I'm going to make the global, I'm going to, this is the global set, I press that there. I'm going to make the minimum length of the mesh of an element is one meter. It's quite a big element, but uh, this is only for demonstration purposes. Now this is in volume, so I'm going to change that to areas. I change that to areas there, and squads, quadrilaterals. I'll put that there, and I'll put mesh there. And I've got to be very careful here. I've got to edit this element here, and I click that there. I got the edge of this uh, cylinder there, I click that there, I lift this up a bit, and I press OK, and there I've got my mesh, and that view's fine, but I want to change it, because I'm going to put in the constraints, so I put pan, zoom, rotate again, and this time I'm going to press right, I've got that there, I'm going to restrict it completely along there, fix it completely here, and simply support it there, so I look for solution, and I look for define loads, and I look for apply, I look for structural, I look for displacement, and I look for on nodes. There's various ways of doing it. I like doing it like this. I'll box, I put a box, press the box there. I'm going to box this in here. I've got to be careful I don't go too far over the le left, or I might restrain some mid side nodes. I press apply, and I'm making all degrees of freedom zero there, so I press that there. I press apply, and I'll go back to my box again. This time I'm going to box in this area here. Mustn't go too far to the right because I might um, restrain some mid-side nodes. And I go to apply there again, and this time I get rid of all degrees of freedom. I stop it in the X and the Y direction to simply support it. And I OK it, and that's fine there. And now I've got all the pressure on, so I put pressure there, and I put it on nodes. There's various ways of doing it. I'm putting it on nodes, and I'm putting it, I'm going to box it. And this time the pressure's all over, so I box it like that. Okay, that. Lift this up a bit. 
and uh, the pressure I want to put minus one pascal minus one because if I put minus one pascal then the eigenvalue that comes out will be actually in pascals minus one because it's external I press that there and I've done that so now I've got to uh, <clears throat> press on uh, analysis type click on new analysis and uh, this time it's static so I press uh, OK and then I pick on uh, um, uh, I pick, I've got to put, this is an unbridged menu so I've got to put that menu there analysis options right I've got to do that and I've got to pre-stress it this is important so, so I go down there and I find the pre-stress is going to be set on I'm doing a static analysis the pre-stress is going to be set on because you've got to work out the stresses in the elements before they buckle because the geometrical stiffness matrix depends on the initial stress. So I now run this, I put solve, I'm running a static analysis, but the pre-stress is on. Solve current LS, I do that, and uh, <clears throat> I've solved it, that's fine. Now I've got the diagon buckling, so I come out of this, and I press uh, um, analysis type, new analysis, I'm doing a new analysis, it tells me I'm gonna lose some of my data there, but that's not, that's not of any important. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't have closed that there. New analysis. I change the eigen buckling, right? It's elastic buckling. I press OK. And I close that there. And then I pick on now. Uh, um, I pick on solve current. Look for solve. This has come up here. I don't know what this is about. Get rid of that. And we go up here to the solution. Go there. And uh, analysis options. So uh, it's block line shows how many modes are we doing? We're doing five modes and the and, uh, um, number of nodes is right. Um, so we do that, we OK that, and uh, we put OK there, and then uh, we uh, press the expansion pass there. That's fine, so that's OK. So we now do the solve current LS, so we can look for solve current LS, and we press that there, and it's done it. Done it quickly. It's worked out diagon buckling. So now we can look at the. So we read the result. We've got the general post processor. We read the results. They're there. there. Uh, the first set. We're only interested in the first set. And we plot the results there. And uh, the form shape there. Uh, the form shape only. OK. So that's it there. So we've got plot controls. And I animate this. I get the mode shape there. And uh, we change this to point note seven five because we get a better view of it. We press that there, and there do this buckle there. The buckling is point three four times ten to the seven pascals. So that's in that's in pascals. If you divide by ten to the fifth, if you divide point three four times ten to the seven by ten to the fifth, it comes out in bar. And uh, that's a, and if you multiply bar by 14.5, you get it in PSI. So I'm going to stop this. Let's see what this view looks like. I'm going to close this. I'm then going to put plot controls there. I'm going to pan zoom rotate. And I'm going to get a front view of it. So I press that there. And now I'm going to go back to plot controls. And uh, we animate it there. And we see what we get there. Animate there. At point naught seven five, the time delay. So we press that there, and there it is. There, the buckling pressure is point three four two times ten to the seven pascals, and there we have it. Um, quite a uh, quite a few waves on it, but that occurs with a large submarine. So I'll close that now, and I thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.